So that is the displacement alternative. Displacement base alternative that lead, remember that, to the Navier's equations. Navier's equations, three equations, three partial differential equations, second order partial differential <coughs> equations, and then we will integrate them. What is the other alternative? The other alternative is, I have to anticipate, no longer used nowadays. Since the computer zero, I mean, analytic for practical purposes, analytical formulations have lost much, much of the practical use. But before that, uh, I mean, analytical formulations for engineers were very important. Were, it was the only way to uh, solve problems, to do, I mean, clever, smart, analytical ways to solve complex uh, partial differential equations. Now, I talk about that just because, I mean, it's educational. But anyway, we are not going to use that. But educational, it's, it's good to see that there are other alternatives and that have been used in the past. And there are many issues that I was told when I, when I was in your place based on complex, um, in complex, um, uh, complex spaces and the ID functions, a number of approaches, which were thought that as engineers, we were able to assume a solution, and we checked if that solution fulfills that, that those equations. But anyway, this is not longer used. This is no longer used. Anyway, the concept is the following. It's a little the opposite of before. Now, what are going to be the primal variables are going to be the stresses. So somehow, we just start conceptually. We start from this equation, the geometrical equation, OK? We, in the geometrical equations, we replace the inverse constitutive equation, so the elastic, the Hooke's law, but the inverse, the strains in terms of the stresses. If we replace that, we have the stresses here, and we solve these equations in which the stresses are the, the, the main variable. And then these equations and also these equations are uh, bounded, considered, are used as boundary conditions, okay? So that is the concept, right? Replace in the geometric equation the inverse of the constitutive modeling and also, when necessary, also replace the equilibrium equations. So finally, we are going to obtain a partial differential equation system on the stresses. And then we have to obtain the stresses, and from the stresses, we have to obtain the strains, and from the strains, we have to obtain the displacements. Uh, well, now that's the concept. But now for practical uses, we don't start exactly from the geometric equation. We start from the compatibility equation. Do you remember these compatibility equations that we derived at chapter two when we talk about, about that, that condition that has to be fulfilled by the strains in order to be compatible with the geometric equations? So these equations are those typically, are a lot of equations. One of the possible expressions is that. So that is the expression of 81, 3 times 3 times 3 times C, so 81 equations, but there are only six of them which are independent, OK? So, but conceptually, we start from that. And somehow, these are obtained from these equations by differentiation and elimination of the displacement. So finally, we start from the compatibility equations, which are equations typically coming out from the, from the uh, kinematic equations, but you know that we have eliminated every trace of the displacement. So uh, there are equations only in terms of the strains. Now, we replace the inverse constitutive equation, that equation, in that equation, but having eliminated the displacement, so we replace those in here, and we obtain a number of partial differential equations now in terms of the stresses only, OK? And we use the remaining equations, and these equations are those, OK? After doing the, using also these, uh, the, the equilibrium equations. By the way, this is only done for equilibrium equations, so <coughs> for quasi-static problems, OK? Not for dynamic problems, OK? So these were reduced, uh, at least in principle, to quasi-static problems. So we do eliminate the uh, right-hand side the right hand side here, right? The, the right hand side in the in the in the question. Okay. So this is the result, you see? Finally, we obtain six equations due to symmetry. There are six equations. You know, then we have here the, Lapla the Laplacian, 
So the gain of the divergence of the stresses, so these are implies second order derivative on the stresses. We hear also some also second order derivative of the stresses. We have here some derivative of the body forces. Finally, this is a system of six partial differential equations where the unknown are the stresses and have to be integrated. Okay? So imagine that we do that. So traditionally what engineers did, Russians were masters in that. The, the mathematical or engineering Russian school were mastering this kind of mathematically based solution. For many years, we were even reading books in Russian looking for the solution, analytical solution of this. Now it's no longer like that, but I tell you that this is not no longer used. Anyway, so imagine that we solve this problem, right? We solve this partial differential equation, and we, we uh, use, whenever we can, the equilibrium equations, and also the, the, the prescribed stresses on gamma sigma as boundary conditions, so we obtain a solution for that, right? Is that all? No. <coughs> After the stresses, we are interested in the strains. And after the strains, so what we do is just once we have the stresses here, once we have the stresses, we replace in the, into the inverse Hooke's law and we obtain the strains. Okay, so far so good. This is a, an algebraic equation. But then we want to compute displacements. As engineers, we are interested in displacement. So, once we have the strains, we have to integrate the strains, we have to solve that equation and obtain displacement, applying also the boundary conditions on the, on the boundary gamma u. You know how to do that. We just trained ourselves, you remember, chapter 3. We just were given some strains and we were requested to provide the displacement. We know how to do that. You know, these two steps integration formula. But again, is another, so we have to integrate, this is another system, partial differential equation system. Now the unknowns is, are the displacements and the data are the strains. We know how to do that, but it's an additional operation that you have to do in the process of solving the problem based on the stresses. So have, first we have to integrate this equation, and then once we have the stresses and from the stresses we obtain the strains, then we have to also to do a second integration. It's a system which is easy to integrate and blah, 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 but it's a second operation. This is one of the reasons, additional reasons, for because this, this procedure, the stress formulation, is practically abandoned. But it's good for you to know how it worked. As you do, our ancestors, our engineers, not so long ago, I mean, even when I was a student, they worked with this system, preferably. And now, when, when uh, computers came up, then, um, then when it is when the, the displacement-based formulation b became uh, more useful.